And now without any further delay, let's begin today's event. Once again, challenges in meeting the GSE mandate for uniform closing data set delivery. Sponsored by Visionet, hosted by National Mortgage News. I would like to introduce your moderator for today, and that is Mike Fisk. Mike, you now have the floor. Thanks, Christina. Really appreciate that. And I would like to welcome the audience once again. We are very grateful that you've chosen to share some of your day with us. We know your time is valuable, and for the next 60 minutes or so, we will make every effort to make every minute count. Once again, our topic today is challenges in meeting the GSE mandate for uniform closing data set delivery. And uh, my name is Michael Sisk. I will be your moderator today. I've been a New York-based journalist for about 20 years. I've had stints as investor editor at Red Herring and editor at large at U.S. Banker, and my articles have also appeared in Barron's, Cranes New York Business, Inc., Institutional Investor, Strategy and Business, and Worth. Um, more important, however, than that are the fact that we have three excellent speakers with us today, and I would like to introduce them to you quickly. Their, name is, uh, their names are Norman Gottschalk. Uh, he is the CTO of Consumer Lending at Visionet, and we also have with us David Gottdenker. Uh, he is the Vice President, Financial Services at Visionet, and rounding out the panel is Jason Nadeau, Executive Consultant with Visionet. And we're very, very pleased um, to have all three gentlemen with us today. And uh, they'll be telling you a little bit more about their background in just a few moments. Before I turn things over to them, I wanted to just reiterate one thing that Christine said at the top of the hour. We do have time at the end for, for a Q&A. You don't have to wait until the end to put your question in. Um, so sort of as the spirit moves you, as the thought kind of comes across your uh, your, your brain during the, uh, during the hour we have together, please just get that question into the queue and we'll make every effort to get to it in the time we have together. If for some reason we run out of time, we don't get to everyone's question, which sometimes happens when we've got uh, lots of good content, um, we will follow up afterward. So please um, ask anything you'd like. We'd love to hear from you. And if, if we don't answer your question today, now we will, we will follow up. So um, please, do, please do ask what you'd like. And uh, with that, I think that that kind of brings me to the end of my little feel here. I will turn things over formally now to David. David, please take it away. Thanks very much, Mike, and thanks everyone for joining today, taking some, as Mike said, taking some time out of your busy days to uh, go through this uh, webinar with us. We think we've been working with our clients now for some time on this, and we think it's an industry-wide issue that we're addressing. So uh, we hope, and I, I see from the attendance that uh, it, it appears that I'm right. <laughs> We're pretty, being pretty well attended today, which is great. Um, with, the, with the UCD deadline that everyone knows about uh, looming next year, uh, we, we've been putting together this solution that we think addresses some of the, the, the challenges that uh, have yet really to be addressed. First, um, I'll go over a, a brief overview of the agenda that we have planned for today. First, um, Norm and Jason and I will qu introduce ourselves really quickly, give you a little bit of background on ourselves. Um, we'll go through the closing disclosure process today and as uh, it, will need to be it will need to be changed starting in 2017. Uh, we'll give you, uh, and everybody you know, is, is uh, experienced mortgage professionals on the call, so we won't take a lot of time going through um, the, the history. Everybody knows how we've gotten here. But, uh, we'll talk a little bit about what the UCD is, um, and then the challenges that were uh, that are still sort of outstanding in in uh, delivering, uh, starting to deliver UCD starting next year. And then we'll go through the solution that we uh, we think we've come up with that uh, will address the uh, those challenges that are still outstanding. So first. Some quick bios. Uh, my name is, I'll start off. My name is David Gottdenker. Uh, I've been a mortgage technologist for about 25 years. I've worked uh, for both lenders, uh, banks, non-banks, and te mortgage technology providers over that 25 years. Uh, I'm relatively <coughs> new to Visionet, uh, but I've been uh, in, most recently I was working for a large systems integrator, uh, which purchased a lo the loan origination systems provider uh, that I was working for. And so I've been brought into Visionet to expand our presence in the mortgage origination space and to uh, build out our mortgage practice. Um, I'll turn it over to Norm now. who will give a brief intro. Hello, thanks, David. Hello, everyone. My name is Norm Gottschalk. I have been 
in the mortgage-related technology industry for over 25 years, specializing in business process optimizations and solutions to help organizations meet regulatory compliance and improve overall profitability. The solution we're going to present to you today is actually started at VisionNet over 18 months ago. Uh, VisionNet uh, prides ourselves in being forward thinkers, and as soon as the new CD format came out, we immediately understood the challenges historically on the HUDs and trying to extract data off the HUDs to produce compliance review and other other documents uh, and data. Uh, and from that, we started this project 18 months ago on trying to truly understand the closing disclosure and all the data points and how we can get to the information electronically and how we can leverage technology to help us morph the CD into future data requirements, which brings us to where we are today, and that is the UCD. And with that, I will pass it over to Jason. Thank you, Norm. Well, thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Jason Nadeau, and I'm also a 25-year-plus veteran of the industry. And over my career, I've worked um, primarily in mortgage lending technology as a chief technology officer for a major title underwriter. Um, I also was the founder and ran for Close to a decade, a company called Really C Technologies. They were a, a vendor management electronic network for the industry, and then I also spent uh, a decade at one of the major underwriters running a number of their technology and lender services operations. And currently, I'm a director at a small consulting company, Corsair Associates, and we are providing technology um, strategy and technology consulting to a number of parties in the industry and working with VisionNet very closely uh, these days on a number of really innovative and interesting solutions, one of which we'll talk to you about today. So I'll hand it back to you, uh, David, I think, to share a little bit about VisionNet. Yes. Thanks, Jason, and thanks, Norm. Uh, so VisionNet uh, in general, VisionNet is, also has 20 years uh, corporate experience in the mortgage industry, supporting lenders, large and small, banks and non-banks, title and settlement services providers, both from a technology and a, a business process outsourcing perspective. Uh, our origination assets, software assets, support processing, title, recording, pre- and post-close audit, uh, and our servicing assets support repurchase, government insuring and remittance, escrow, assignments, and uh, we specialize in integration with MSP. All of the assets, our software assets, are supported by our OCR technology, which uh, does electronic document classification, indexing, and data extraction. Uh, we do on we have on and offshore BPO centers that support uh, our clients using our own technology or theirs, and we're in the process of expanding partnerships with LOS providers and other uh, industry participants to become uh, more embedded in the uh, their ecosystems. Our our uh, vision is uh, roughly 3,000 employees globally. So with that. I will jump over to the next slide where we're going to talk about what the closing disclosure process is. So today, uh, everybody's real familiar with the way that the closing disclosure process and the loan delivery process in general works today. Uh, in, in, on, in the happy path, that is the, the, the most streamlined path, the uh, and lender's LOS produces the CD either itself or by interfacing with a doc uh, a doc prep provider such as Doc Magic or DocuTech, uh, and there are plenty of other smaller ones out there. Um, the CD is included in the closing package that gets produced out of the LOS and sent to the closing agent, which is either your attorney or title company, uh, and that has to be done three days prior to closing. That's our whole uh, TRID compliance world. The closing is conducted. All parties execute the CDs. The final C executed CD is returned back to the lender. And then the lender includes the paper and the image CD in the loan delivery package to the investor. And this, this second to last step here is where the big change is coming next year. And so, but of course, as everyone knows, the, this process I've gone through relatively quickly is, is greatly oversimplified. There are uh, tons of hiccups that happen during the closing process, lots of back and forth, occasion, occasionally back and forth, stops and starts, and in the TRID world, uh, with the three-day disclosure rule, um, that those hiccups can can be costly uh, from a time and uh, money perspective. So, uh, jumping to the next slide, starting in 2017, the 
the most significant change here is where I've got that big yellow arrow pointing, and that's on the, the actual delivery of the loan to the investor. Um, the GSEs, Fannie and Freddie, have embraced MISMO and are, have published a specification for how closing data needs to be delivered. That is, that it's called Uniform Closing Data Set. And, uh, and so as early as the second quarter of next year, they will mandate the delivery of loans uh, use, using the UCD. So and in general, in, instead of simply a PDF image uh, of the CD, the, the UCD will consist of the, all of the data that makes up that image uh, wrapped in an XML uh, file format and delivered via the, the Fannie or Freddie portal. That XML is not only MISMO 3.3, does not have to be only MISMO 3.3 compliant, but the GSEs also have mandated uh, requirements over and above what is required for MISMO 3.3 compliance, uh, specifically the order of the, that the fields need to be delivered. Um, there's also some enumerations and uh, uh, other requirements that the GSEs have layered on top of what MISMO itself requires to be compliant. and. Um, so the, you deliver that via the portal or in a compliant format or the, comp the portal will reject the delivery with uh, findings. And now the portal uh, will, will allow a manual keying of data from the, the CD, but really if you're a lender of any size or, uh, or volume, that's really not an option. It's not economically feasible to, to deliver that way. Uh, and so if you have a simple one borrower, retail originated, refinance transaction that closes according to the, you know, happy um, streamlined path, then, uh, and also, and you're using a, a, a standard, industry standard LOS and doc prep provider, then your LOS itself probably will need, will be able to create your UCD XML. But that's a lot of ifs and, uh, and a lot of, um, you know, reliance on that streamlined happy path closing. So, um, and as we as we said, we know there are many points of potential failure along that happy path, and every loan is unique. <clears throat> so, uh, hence the need for um, <clears throat> challenges and the, the solution that we've put together. So, Norm, now I'm going to turn it over to you, and uh, Norm will give us some more background on the UCD itself. Thank you, David. So for the UCD, I have to say that the GSEs have done a phenomenal job of producing a tremendous amount of information out there for us to absorb and to understand how to create the UCD. The UCD is like any of the other standard formats that typically we do with the GSEs, but there's a lot of data points. If you simply look at the purchase spec, there's over 600 distinct data points that can be extracted or pulled off a closing disclosure, and that does not include the number of iterations or enumerations within inside of each section. So there's a, there's a lot of information, and all final guidance should come from the GSEs at the end of the day for everyone. But with the number of data points and the fact that we have multiple different type of UCDs that can be presented to them, the purchase spec, the non-seller, the split disclosure, and so forth, that only complicates the actual involvement in actually producing a finalized UCD uh, to the GSEs at the end and submitting that through the portals and the different technologies that the, the GSEs have uh, presented to us today. The nice thing is that both all the GSEs are using the same UCD format, which is wrapped up inside of the MISMO. So once you generate the UCD for one GSE, it'll work for all the GSEs, even though the delivery mechanism may be slightly different. But it's also important to understand that the closing disclosure, trying to generate a UCD from a closing disclosure can't be done 100% from the closing disclosure because there are additional data elements that are not present on the closing disclosures that must be submitted to the GSE. So the really to produce the final disclosure the UCD data set to go back to the GSEs, it becomes a hybrid of LOS data, uh, a small portion of it, and with a significant payload coming potentially from a executed uh, closing disclosure, especially in the correspondence channel if you're receiving that PDF at the last minute. The GSEs, you know, have a timeline that they are beginning very shortly, if they have not already, to allow you to begin to submit 
your UCDs for a testing period. And again, I would recommend everyone go to the uh, UCD sites for either uh, either one of the GSEs and get the timeline. The timeline for the mandate is coming upon us very quickly, and there are a lot of challenges as you actually begin to generate the UCD. As you think about, as you start to look at it, and you look at the number of enumeration points, there's, uh, for example, over 200 enumeration patterns that the GSEs have presented back to us that require a mapping from a text representation on the document to the final delivery of the UCD. On top of that, you must also make sure that your UCD calculates properly, and if you don't have the original source data in a text format or it's some type of data format you can get from the LOS, that's going to present you significant challenges down the road. And then for lenders who have both origination and correspondence channels, they obviously do not want to generate two different types of UCDs or have two separate technologies for generating that UCD because the cost of managing and maintaining the data sets can become very expensive. And, you know, we do, at this point, we do not know what type of changes we could anticipate from the GSEs, even though they're, I believe right now they're in a freeze of any changes, but we don't know what's going to happen three months from now, six months from now, nine months from now, as the evolution goes through, and as soon as these, these actual live packages begin to hit the GSEs and they begin processing those accordingly. So, you know, in, if you haven't started your process today on understanding the UCD and what you need to do to actually be able to present the UCD, Obviously, our recommendation is you get started immediately. Hopefully, by joining this call, you're becoming part of the, the solution for your organization. But there are so many data points and so many different enumeration patterns that you really have to take a strategic look at your overall processes and all the channels that could be involved with the generation of the UCD and how you're going to effectively deliver that to the GSEs come next year. So with that, I'm going to pass this over to back to Jason on some of the additional industry challenges. Thanks, Norm. Thanks for telling us a little bit about what's going on with the UCD. So let's talk a little bit about some of the challenges. And we've got a couple slides here of challenges, uh, unfortunately. It always seems to be that the industry continues to throw us curveballs and change. Um, some of the challenges with getting the UCD um, over to uh, Fannie Mae, as we talked about over the GSEs here, is the fact that it's not as simple as just taking the closing disclosure um, and dropping it into data and sending it along. Since this is a document that is going out to the closing agents and all of you have been through the fun of implementing the closing disclosure over the last you know, couple of years now as we've been working on it, we noticed that there were a number of uh, challenges with that. Probably the most significant challenge that we've got in the in, as an industry to deal with as we move to this uh, data set is that the closing disclosure doesn't come from the closing table as data. As we know, we may be sending the document out to the closing agent for them to have executed with the borrower and the seller, but that document is coming back to us often as a scanned image and also as an original paper document. This needs to be converted to data. Unfortunately, the UCD specification, as uh, Norm shared with us, is pretty extensive, and there's a lot of data involved in that. So this needs to be converted perfectly to data, not simply um, manually typed or a handful of pieces of data pulled off of it. The second thing we have to deal with is, is that there are a number of closing agents out there and a number of disparate systems. It would be very nice if we had a completely electronically connected ecosystem across all of the tens of thousands of closing agents and the thousands of lenders that we have. But as we've learned over these past two years through the exercise that we just went through, we do not have a perfectly connected electronic ecosystem. The other thing that we have to run into is that a number of these agents out there they may be recreating the closing disclosure. They may be recreating that closing disclosure in their system in order for the data to get into their system and for them to support the ability to do disbursements and other types of things that they will be doing off of their systems. As a result of that, the closing disclosure that may be coming back to you may not match perfectly the disclosure you sent out. It is not a valid assumption as a lender that the document that you're sending out to that closing agent is come, going to come back exactly perfectly as you sent it out with nothing more than signatures attached. And as a result, the only real source of truth on what came on that closing disclosure is that signed closing disclosure that you're receiving as a scanned image or as a paper document. So the challenge ultimately boils down to how are you going to convert that document into a perfect set of data. David, do we want to move on to the next slide and hand it over to you? Okay, thanks, Jason. A few more challenges uh, in, in this delivering of the UCD. Uh, the first one, for, for a variety of reasons, a lot of lenders use smaller 
uh, or less technically sophisticated doc prep providers uh, that may not be able to provide uh, all of the data or, uh, or, or the data at, uh, that underlies the documents that, that get produced. And also in conjunction with, some, with local or smaller closing agents or attorneys, they may be using their own uh, technology or homegrown solutions to produce CDs with, uh, with, with, that contain insufficient automation or uh, integration capabilities. So the data that they're uh, spraying onto the human readable closing disclosures may not be available uh, when using those types of providers. In addition, uh, some correspondent and bulk uh, ac acquirers of, uh, of mortgages are, are not willing for a variety of reasons or uh, sort of distasteful to ask their sellers to conform technically uh, and provide all the data that's required, um, that they're, 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 they are their customers after all, and they don't want to make it difficult to do business with them. Um, also, so again, some fields that are calculated or recalculated by doc prep providers in conjunction with compliance checks or um, uh, you know, just derived data fields required for the closing disclosure but not provided through the lender's LOS uh, may not be able to be passed back to the LOS from that doc prep provider. Um, so they're required on the UCD, but they're not passed back to the LOS for uh, inclusion in the UCD. So, uh, and Fannie uh, specifically has hinted at the challenge, some of these challenges in uh, their, their communications around the UCD and, its, and the timeline. Um, there's a few links that we can provide uh, in when, we, when we provide you the presentation here and uh, just for, for reference purposes. But um, it's, it's an acknowledged industry issue that we're dealing with. So Jason, I'll, I'll kick, kick over the next slide to you. Certainly. So a couple other challenges that we need to think about or, and iterate through as we look at different solutions. So obviously the most um, prevalent idea that comes to mind to solve this problem is, is to move to manual data capture. This process, as we know, for any of you that have run a post-closing department have been involved in the post-closing operation to receive back that manual closing disclosure from the consumer, have somebody in your operation or some other um, outsourced vendor stare and compare and compare the data that came back on that closing disclosure to the one that you send out or capture that data by hand. As we know, this is expensive. There's a time process on it. It's prone to errors, it's time consuming, and then you're going to have to, in addition to QC, you're gonna to have to have somebody looking over the shoulder of the people looking over the shoulders because a single data entry validation is not gonna work in a post-closing world. So that obviously makes a bunch of us immediately think of OCR. Those of us have familiarity with OCR understand that it's a great tool, but it is very limited. At absolute best case scenario, with the best documents, first generation PDFs and such out there, you'd be lucky to get an 80 or 90% conversion ratio out of it. Keep in mind, these documents that are gonna be coming back from the closing table, they're coming back in a quality of scan based upon the scanner of that closing agent that you've worked with. Or you can wait till the manual paper comes in, scan it yourself, and then attempt to run OCR against it. The other challenge you have with that, obviously, is, is that in addition to only being 80 or 90%, you're turning right around and you're having to clean up, do data capture, or you're having to do quality control on that because it is not a perfect solution. You're not able to scan it to 100% reliability. And keep in mind now, one of the things that the UCD has brought us is it has raised the bar on the level of accuracy that is being expected on this data delivered. In the past, when we would be delivering to the investor an image of the document, now we're delivering to them a robust 600 plus field data set and that data set is expected to be 100% accurate. That raises the bar substantially on the type of solutions that you've got. The other thing that you have to think about is when you look at the closing disclosure, and those of you that are familiar with the nuances that go into the closing disclosure, you understand that there are sections within the closing disclosure that are dynamically built, such as loan costs and such. That means that you have data that sits on these documents that is not perfectly positioned, is not easy to find with XY coordinates, is not well set up for an OCR type solution. And then the last piece of it that we've run into, and as Norm mentioned, 
Um, VisionNet has been doing this for over 18 months on this solution, working with other clients. There is clearly an inconsistency in terminology between the closing disclosure, the MISMO format, and the other GSC requirements. This requires that there be sophisticated mapping put in place and technology in place that allows you to convert between these multiple different data sets as well as data terminology. So it's not as simple as find this spot on the document, pull that piece of data out, send it off to the investor, we're good. This is a very dynamic process with a number of rules that have to execute against it. David, I think it's yours next. I'll yeah. it over here to you. Thank you, and I apologize in advance if there's noise behind me. My air conditioning just kicked on, so it's a little bit loud, but uh, I'll, I'll do the best I can. So finally, folks, last, hopefully last challenges slide, and then we get into the meat of the solution we've put together. Um, there, there, are, there could be multiple copies of, uh, and multiple iterations of the CD per a given loan, um, and the more parties to the transaction, the potentially more CDs and more formats. And there are slightly different GSC requirements based on the transaction type. Um, the CDs that get produced by various doc prep providers, attorneys, closing agents, and the LOSs may also vary slightly in format. And if you have manual processes that you're uh, relying on to handle some of the uh, variations in format, that's going to require uh, specific training and um, documentation around each of those. And then finally, multiple CDs on the same transaction. Uh, for example, if you have a, for separate CDs for buyer and seller, are going to need to be merged into one UCD for delivery to the GSE. Um, so it's not, and it's not as simple as just appending one XML to the other. They will have to be uh, actually merged and uh, into one cohesive XML uh, delivery. So we've outlined the issue, the issue and several of the challenges we've seen and heard from our, uh, our current clients. And over the past 18, 18 months, of, as we said, we've been working with those clients to leverage our experience and our, our technical assets to develop a solution. Uh, and at this point, I'll turn it over to Norm, and he'll uh, walk us through how that solution is put together. Thank you, David. And before uh, I actually begin to walk through some of the solutions we have, I'd just like to add some additional comments or color to what uh, Jason was speaking about before. So if you are in a position where you need to generate a UCD from an electronic image, you know, Jason clearly identified some of the challenges with the scanning quality and the dynamic format, but there's a lot more challenges behind it than those few that he mentioned. Uh, for example, you know, Oftentimes, we will see closing disclosures that actually has supplemental and important information on the addendums, and that information needs, could potentially affect the closing disclosure or the UCD that is presented. Um, on top of that, we're also seeing with these dynamic fields that if you have multiple borrowers on a closing disclosure, they may not include the borrower on the first page. They may include a reference to the addendum page, or they may include the first two or three borrowers, but then strip off the property address and put that on the addendum page. Another example with borrowers, with the way that the freeform fields go, is oftentimes you will see those fields just be truncated where you get a partial zip code or no zip code, which thereby would make any type of extraction be invalidated from the data standpoint. Then the, the projected payments and all of the dynamic tables that go through the process just continues to add complexity to it, plus different font sizes. We've seen some vendors out there under their contact information try to add five or six contacts and actually put the data on a form at six-point font, which is very difficult for the system to process. And then you also need to take into consideration the OCR versus the ICR when you actually review the form. The OCR, for those who don't know, will do the optical character recognition, but the ICR needs to be used for pulling the actual date the document was signed from an executed document. And if you don't have an executed document, then that may not be the proper document that you want to submit. And you need to make that determination as you actually go through the overall life cycle of the closing disclosure to the UCD transformation. Uh, on top of that, you can also add, you know, the CFPB uh, designed a very elegant form, very nice, and it looks great until you actually scan it in and then you find out all the beautiful shading that they added does nothing but distort the document from the beginning to the end, making it very difficult to actually 
determine where information is on the document or what the proper headers are, especially on some of the purchase agreements themselves. Then every document provider, as I said before, whether it be Doc Magic, Walrus Clore, Guardian Docs and Compass and so forth, they all have their, their different variations. So if you are on the correspondence channel and you're buying loans or you're dealing with them from multiple, you're ingesting them from multiple sources, you would then have to build a solution that's going to support every type of closing disclosure format you're going to receive. And the smallest of nuances can cause you the largest problems as you actually begin to extract the data. Uh, so these challenges, which I'm just uh, discussing some of the larger ones here, can really impact your effectiveness to actually obtain the data accurately from the closing disclosure. Jason put it very elegantly before. Best case scenario on a scanned image, 80 to 90 percent, you're going to be happy. We can run some automated rules against the system. We can make determinations from a systemic standpoint as to whether our fields calculate, if they're proper, if they're in range, if they meet certain reg, um, what we call reg -ex expressions through the patterns. Uh, but really, if you come back with what we would classify a distorted or a noisy closing disclosure, where you can't even identify that on the scanned image, and most of us have probably seen these on a scanned image, where you can barely make out the word other cost on the closing disclosure on the second page, then how do you process that from an OCR standpoint? You know, VisionNet has invested a lot of time and research into using a specialized uh, electrical um, analysis parsing algorithm to actually process these documents, and we've been doing that for 18 months. So with that, you know, leveraging our existing busy loan review solution, you know, VisionNet has three three solution offerings out there that we're offering to the market today to help organizations who need to deal with this solution. And I know we've been saying all along about the electronic signatures, but you also need to identify how you're going to handle text selectable PDFs through the process if you want to generate a UCD file uh, before the execution for delivery. So you can actually run into a more complicated solution on your side where you're dealing with text selectable PDFs from your document provider, but then you're dealing with executed PDFs from the title agent that they're sending back in through um, your, your LOS system or you're ingesting them in the post-closing process physically scanning the paper. And then when you get back into the the uh, electronic version that you're receiving, you have to deal with uh, potential encryptions, editing permissions inside the document, and so forth as you move forward. So VisionNet has spent a tremendous amount of time in creating a solution that can address the issues. It can understand both a text selectable closing disclosure and also a image-based closing disclosure and actually present and create a UCD file that can then be submitted to the GSEs. In general, in, um, or typically, the, as I stated earlier, the closing disclosure does not contain everything that's required to be submitted to the GSEs as part of the UCD. It contains, I'll call it, 95% of the data that is required on the output. So with that, it really needs to become a joint effort between the the organization or the individual who's going to extract the data from the UCD, aligning that with your LOS data to produce the final document and deliver it. So VisionNet has three solutions out here that we're offering the market. The first solution is a very simple solution where you can send us an image-based PDF of a closing disclosure and we will, we will return back to you the UCD format. Uh, we will handle, VisionNet will handle all the enumerations, all the mappings. Uh, it's simply going after the data on the document, running our complex rules and our, our proprietary algorithm against the actual solution to generate the baseline UCD. And it, it's a good solution and it's a great step forward to actually building it because VisionNet has invested the time and resources into understanding all of the different document providers out there documents. And we also address situations, for example, we still see today closing disclosures that came that was was scanned on letter size paper but shrunk into paper, uh, I'm sorry, scanned one as legal size and shrunk into paper size given a 20% reduction on the overall quality of the image itself. Uh, so our first solution is solution one where you can present to us through a portal or through a web service call a PDF image and then we will return back to you that baseline UCD XML that you can then take and supplement and deliver to the GSEs. The second solution is really an extension of the first solution, and this is where you could submit to VisionNet a 
image of a closing disclosure or multiple images. If you have a buyer and a seller image that are separate, you can send both of those to us simultaneously, and then we can extract the data, apply BPO resources to provide a white glove service, a guarantee or ensuring accuracy of the data, and handling specialized situations such as we discussed before. The addendum pages, if you're receiving from multiple channels, you can't make the assumption that every addendum page will be not, will not affect the output of the UCD. Uh, take example that I gave you before about the property address not fitting on the first page or the borrower name is not fitting. There being seven borrower's names that doesn't fit at the top of the box or you have a bad copy of a scan. So this option two that VisionNet offers to the market is you, you can send us the PDF. We will generate the baseline UCD, offer a white glove service on that UCD and then deliver that final product back to to your organization. And, you know, both of the, all of these examples mean that you as an organization do not need to worry about the numeration, the mapping, and the different document providers out there or the different formats that you're receiving these documents in. Uh, that can actually be handled by us and by our technology on our side. And the third option is where we can take, for example, a split disclosure or buyer-seller CD, we can, ext we can extract the same data, we can provide the white glove service, and then we can produce a final combined closing disclosure if needed, or a very poor quality image closing disclosure, align that with LOS data, and return back not only a UCD format, but a reproduced uh, clean electronic image of that closing disclosure that matched the closing disclosure that was provided to us from any, any of our clients or through our solutions. And with that, I believe I am passing it back to myself. So the uh, closing disclosure UCD, you know, there's a lot of technology that's involved here with this, right? And you'll see on here it gives some of the actual components of the system, but there's it's not just about going after the data. It's about going after the data and understanding every permutation, every enumeration of the closing disclosure that can exist. When you get inside of some of the complex sections and you're going after the contacts and you're trying to identify how to address a, an extension number that's falling on the second line underneath the actual phone number or the way they map the names on the left-hand side or whether an item should be classified as homeowner's insurance or whether it should be flood or, or so forth, the solution becomes a very complex and large solution. And it really is a combination of, you know, OCR on the front end, and it doesn't matter what OCR provider you go out there on the market, whether you use um, Abby, OmniPage, or any of the popular ones that are out there, you still start with your baseline documents. But once you get that document, then you need to do, the electrical analysis on top of the document to identify the data points, extract those data points, and build them into a normalized relationship that you can then run through your compliance rules engine and your checklist portion of the system to identify whether you truly do have a well-formed closing disclosure or UCD that you can generate from that data. And once you start to do that, and you, you can then bring on top of it all the analytical capabilities of of our technology to begin to understand where you have potential issues outlining from your LOS to your title companies. You know, another perfect solution for this is if your title agents are sending you back the elect, the wet signed closing disclosures and you want to actually map it back against your LOS data and, and check their accuracy, it would be another solution. You could present to us the PDF uh, executed, we could produce a UCD, and if your technology or your LOS is already generating that, you can then run a simple rule comparison between the two and identify if any changes happen at the closing table that you are unaware of, and you can pick that up in a matter of minutes instead of instead of having a steer and compare and someone spending hours for doing that. So from our standpoint, you know, our preferred method to deliver it outbound is the MISMO 3 in the UCD format, but VisionNet can also provide that in any format that's necessary because, again, the difficult part becomes the extraction of the data and building it into a normalized relationship that matches the GSE's requirements and all the enumeration pad patterns and all the complexities of the dynamic form itself. So, and then VisionNet can also supplement that, as we said before, with our white glove service as, as an optional item across the entire solution that we offer, bringing a very low-cost solution to generate your UCD from a executed closing disclosure document. And with that, I will pass it back to David. Okay. Thanks, Norm. 
So that concludes the formal part of our presentation. Uh, thanks, everyone, for your attendance and your participation. I hope you found it uh, informative and compelling. I see there are a few uh, questions we've had come in. So, Mike, if you want to, uh, I'll turn it over to Mike, and you can walk us through some of those Q&As that have come in. Great, great. Thank you, David. And I'll do, I'll do just that. As we promised, we've got some time here for some Q&A, so, and there's some already some great questions in, but if anybody out there still has something that they're, that they're considering asking, now would be the, definitely the time to, to get that in the queue. So let me, I'll just ask this question to the panel, and please just everyone, you know, jump in as you'd, as you'd like to, um, to answer the question. So first is, uh, will all seller closing cost information on the separate seller CD be required in the UCD? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh. I I can. I mean, it's David. I can take a shot at that. I think, from our understanding, the answer is yes. Uh, if there's a separate seller CD produced, that all of the information on that CD needs to be included in the UCD delivered to the the GSC. There's a lot of acronyms I just threw out there. Uh, correct, David. And that goes to the split disclosure UCD format that can be uh, presented and that the GSCs have defined. Excellent, excellent. Thank you, guys. Uh, all right, next question here. Uh, when is MISMO 3.4 going to be required? Okay, my, my response to that would be you need to check with the GSEs to see when they're going to change the MISMO version for the UCDs. Obviously, they are the governance of that. Uh, as of this point in time, I am unaware of a date. I believe right now they're on a freeze for changes as they take the first phase of this live, but that would be an answer that needs to be responded to by, the, by your GSEs you're working with. Great. Thank you. Thanks for that clarity. Okay. Uh, next question here. Uh, how is this different than just implementing an OCR solution ourselves? <clears throat> The big difference on implementing your own OCR solution is the cost to implement it and to deal with all the different document providers and all the different document formats that you have, right? So anyone could technically begin a project and build a project and build up the solution on the back end to handle their volumes and try to execute and produce the closing disclosure. But even if they do that, then they're going to have to supplement that with the exception-based processing that's required. What happens if you get an encrypted PDF? What happens if you get an unreadable PDF? What happens if the scanned image had a dog ear? What happens if the quality of the image is bad? Uh, so, you know, technically, you can buy the components. You can get them to a project. As I said earlier in this presentation, VisionNet has spent about 18 months so far in developing this technology to date. Uh, it is a very complex technology, when you, when, and it's not just about getting the data, but it's about getting the data and understanding every document format and every deviation of a document format you're going to receive and allowing, aligning that data with your compliance risk engine on your side and the analytics and the enumeration patterns and doing it for each of the different type of UCD formats you need to present. Uh, you know, VisionNet's goal here is not to replace a UCD that can come directly out of an LOS system that you have the data. Our solution is to help you address the issues where you are dealing with either a electronically signed document that you don't have the information directly in your LOS, for uh, perfect examples on the correspondence channel, or if you're looking to verify the data coming back from the signing table with us there and compare from the, from the settlement agents out there throughout the United States. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. All right. Um, next question here. If the PDF file we receive, or the PDF files we receive are text selectable, how does your solution provide value? Okay. Uh, it, it's simple. Uh, a text selectable PDF, if you look at most of the text selectable PDFs out there on the market, a lot of times they will embed tags in the PDF itself that will allow you to identify this, the solution. So if you have one single document provider and you're only going to get data from that document provider, 
in no other sources of ingestion, you might be able to relatively easily build a, build a solution. You don't have to worry about the OCR component because you'll be at 100%. However, if you have to address multiple document providers, then you have to take a project on yourself to be able to identify any time a document provider changes their tagging naming convention with inside the document itself, or some some. Uh, text selectable PDFs we've seen do not even contain any such tag information. It is just text written out on the page itself. If you get into that, then you have to go after the parsing algorithm yourself. So our technology understands and can address both the text selectable and the image based in a single solution for an organization. If you're going to build a text selectable module yourself and you still need to deal with the OCR uh, or the image-based closing disclosures, then you'll find out you're going to end up almost with two solutions or have to build both both branches of that solution to bring it down into a unified closing disclosure set that you can use and submit moving forward. Excellent. Excellent. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Uh, lots of great questions here. Thank you, everyone from the audience, for putting these in. Uh, next question. Is VisionNet working with Ellie May? Uh, this is David Gothanker. I'll take that one. Uh, my, my answer would be not directly. Uh, we do have some clients that are uh, Encompass, that are, are on the Encompass LOS, and uh, we are we have uh, built we working with some third-party integrators, but we're not a um, what you call your uh, standard or approved LMA partner at this point. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Good. All right, here we go. If uh, if the lender produces a combined CD and the settlement agent produces a seller CD, would you need to embed both PDF images since both are at the table? I understand the data does not. I, I understand the data does, but just asking about PDFs themselves. Yeah, this is David. I'll, I'll take a shot at that one too. And Norm, you can back me up. Uh, I believe the answer is yes that all of the image CDs that are relevant to the loan transaction need to be included in embedded in the uh, UCD as well. Correct. And, and I'd just like to add one other comment to that. You know, we also see CDs we receive that include documents that are not related to CDs or that you have to address as you actually process these transactions, especially coming from settlement agents. Oftentimes, we'll get a CD and, and either before or after the addendum, we will actually see an alt to SS in the middle of that. So it's another it's it's another nuance that if you're processing the image based the closing disclosures that you need to deal with as well. Hmm. Great. Thank you. All right. Does Visionet guarantee that the UCD document will comport with the final borrower signed version? Norm, do you want to take that one? Yeah, I can. Uh, we, yes, we we offer a standard SL, um, SLA. We do not rep and warrant these transactions, but we also run the compliance and the all of the mathematical calculations to ensure that the document is accurate. And we expect that our data findings be returned to you to be supplemented with any data you have from the LOS to help ensure the overall accuracy of the document itself. And and this is David. I would just add that it's it's the combination of pro. Uh, People, process, and technology on our side that allow us to, to you know, come up with that SLA, uh, even in the event of a, you know, because OCR, like we said before, is never going to be 100%. So if you run into a situation where you have a, a poor quality document uh, and the OCR is not able to read certain of the fields off of it, we have uh, the, the people in the back office to QA what the OCR. Um, Technology was not able to finish, so that's how we're able to guarantee that you get back a, uh, a, a fully formed and compliant UCD. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, here, and here's just a, a clarity question um, for, maybe for Norman. Uh, when you say version three, do you mean 3.3 .3 or later? Uh, can you can the question be clarified? Uh, when you say version three, 
do you mean a 3.3 or later? Well, okay, so the GSEs have defined the version that is used for the UCDs, and I believe that, if I'm not mistaken, that is 3.3 is the UCD version that gets wrapped inside of the MISMO, and that is the version that must be submitted. Gotcha. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, let's see here. What about the elements that is required for UCD that are outside of the closing disclosure document? Okay, those uh, I've referenced those elements before. So really, the final submission of the UCD needs to be a combination of data that may exist in the LOS as well as data from the document itself. But the majority of the data, I'd call it over 95% of the data is coming from the UCD itself, not from the LOS. But there are a handful of fields that are separate and not presented on the closing disclosure that must be returned to the GSEs in the final product. Great, great, thank you for that. Um, okay, hold on, just going through here, making sure we... Okay, uh, my understanding is that a correspondent originator would send the UCD, not the correspondent purchaser. Have you heard differently in what scenario would the purchaser need to send the UCD? Uh, this is David. I'll take a shot at that one, and, and Jason or Norm, um, you guys can back me up again. The, there's a lot of different flavors of correspondent, and my understanding is that if it's a, a, a transaction where the, the correspondent purchaser is funding the loan at the table, that in that situation the purchaser would be required to submit the uh, UCD. If it's a, a, a purchase of a loan that's somewhat seasoned, where the, the lender has Funded the, the, the correspondent seller has funded the loan themselves, has held on to it for a certain number uh, for a period of time, and is now bundling it uh, for sale to a correspondent investor. That in that situation, the investor would be required to submit uh, the UCD. In in um, in uh, also, we're working with some bulk purchasers. Where they're they're executing deals of you know hundreds or, or potentially thousands of loans at one time, and uh, really all they have is all they're getting from their uh, bulk sellers is a data tape and uh, image documents, and in that case they'd be required to produce the uh, UCDs themselves and, and submit them as as purchases. And this is Jason. I'll, I'll add to that. I agree with that. And then the other. Um, scenario that we've been working with for uh, correspondent lenders is while the um, correspondent seller may have submitted the information to the GSC in some scenarios, as, as David mentioned, the purchaser is interested in validating from a compliance standpoint that the data submitted was accurate and matches what was in the closing package itself. So our solution is implemented in a, a QC or a due diligence type fashion that allows the purchaser to ensure that the transaction that they're purchasing meets the GSE requirements. Excellent, excellent. Thank you all, and I, I, uh, I think we probably will wrap it up there. We've gotten through, we had a lot of questions, but we've gotten, gotten through them. Um, just a few minutes time before the top of the hour, so we're just slightly ahead of schedule, but I don't think anybody will be too uh, happy with us if we give them uh, two or three minutes back of their, of their day. Um, so let me first of all thank Jason, Norman, and David. It's been a great hour of discussion, lots of good content. And like I said, we had lots of great questions, which is always a, uh, a nice sign, feels us, makes us feel good that we're, uh, that we're um, talking about something that the, uh, the audience is interested in and is resonating. So, um, and thank you, everyone in the audience, for being here. Please keep an eye out. We'll be sending you an email in the next couple of days that will have a a link to the recording of this uh, conversation. So if you want to uh, re-listen to capture some thoughts, please, uh, that'll be at your disposal to do so. I encourage you to do it. And with that, I'll wrap it up. Wish everyone a wonderful rest of the day, and I hope you'll join us again here very soon. Thanks so much.